Thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, I'm Dion Brought and I'm the product manager. Um, I look after childcare, education and training and healthcare. Um, my colleague Esther, who is the subject advisor for health and social care and childcare is here. I'm sure most of you know Esther. Um, so if anybody's got any questions or anything, please put it in the chat. Um, Esther can pick that up as we go along. Um, I'm sort of screen sharing so I can I can't see the chat or anything, but Esther will support there any questions relating to this. What I wanted to do today, we've got lots to get through, um, but I wanted to really just try and concentrate on the new qualification, what it looks like, what the differences are from of what you're delivering now, and then what's going to happen to the current suite. Um, so I will endeavor to go through that. So again, contents overview, um, talk about transferable digital and sustainable skills. I know when we did the last presentation um, earlier on in the year, we did, um, we, did, we did look at that and we briefly talked over that. Talk about support uh, and most important, the defunding of current qualifications, the timelines um, and what this suite will look like moving forwards. First thing we need to do is to address really, um, we've added these slides in obviously because when we'd created the slides and, and started the launch events, we hadn't, um, a general election hadn't been um, called. We've had lots of questions already about the general election. So just really just to talk through where we are at the moment and what we know and what we don't know. Um, the most obvious question that we've had straight away is, are all of the reforms impacted by the general election? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Um, the government um, have postponed the submission of the cycle two, level three. So cycle one, as you know, has gone through. What we're talking about today was a cycle one um, reform. So They've all gone through, they've all been approved, they've all been allocated their funding for um, 2025 onwards. Um, the level, cycle two of the level three, which were meant to be submitted in um, June, I think it was beginning of July, end of June, beginning of July, um, they have been put on hold, not stopped, but they've been put on hold until there's further announcements after the 4th of July. So that's all we know at this moment in time, that the cycle two of the level three has been postponed. The, um, the um, submission window has been closed um, and we don't know when that's going to open. Um, again, another question that we've had quite a lot of is the, um, the general election, mean the current reforms will be abandoned or paused. And again, we don't know that. We can't confirm what, what's going to happen to the entire suite of reforms, cycle one, cycle two, future cycles, level two cycles, T-levels. We just don't know. Um, so um, we are continuing um, to do what we're doing um, and until we're told anything else. Um, by the current government or a new government, whatever happens from the 4th of July, um, we, um, we will take action then when we're told um, what is going to happen. But at this moment in time, we, we just don't know. Um, so we're continuing with the reforms. Um, um, again, if there's a change of government, will there be changes to the reform and when will this be made? Again, until the um, general election has happened, um, we don't know anything. Um, we await the information from the government. As soon as we know something about the development um, of the BTEC nationals or, or the reforms in general, we will um, start communicating with centres as soon as we know. So that's where we're at at this moment in time. We don't know any more than I suppose you know really um, of what's going to happen with the, um, the post-16 um, education space. Okay, so um, wanted to first thing we're going to talk about is um, obviously you'll be moving from the current um, BTEC National, the Children's Play Learning and Development qualifications from 2025 onwards. So you will automatically um, get auto approval. Um, if you're currently delivering the childcare qualifications, um, you will get um, approval for the new qualifications. Um, again, we've been through the process, we've refreshed and updated the content 
within the specification, within the assessment, um, still trying to make sure it's simple, manageable, that it's flexible for you to deliver. We've, un we've not changed the quality assurance process, standards verification is at the heart. We still have external assessment twice a year with internal, um, internally assessed units, assessed by the Pearson set assignment briefs. Um, grading and marking methodologies are unchanged and the support around that is unchanged. So we've tried to make the transition from one to another as painless as possible for you. Um, but within the guidelines that we've had to work to for, um, for the reforms. Okay, so as you know, the new qualification that we are launching, which will be for First Teach, is um, First Teach September 2025, sorry, will be called the Level 3 Alternative Academic Extended Certificate in Early Childhood Development. Um, and what I've done, I've put the two side by side. So on the left hand side is the new qualification. Um, and the units and the GLH. And on the right hand side, I've just put the existing qualification that you will be delivering um, as the extended certificate. So um, overall GLH um, is the same, it's 360 GLH. Um, so you can deliver that a year full time, um, you know, to over two years part time as you are currently doing. In the new qualification, we have gone for four mandatory units. So there is no optional units in the new qualification. They are four um, mandatory units. Um, you currently have three mandatory units and you can choose one of the optional units for the extended certificate. So just talk you through unit one of the new qualification, the early childhood development. Unit one um, is the same as unit one in the current extended certificate in the children's play, learning and development. Um, children's development, um, the differences you can see straight away is it's now a 90 GLH unit rather than a 120 GLH unit. It still has external assessment um, with that unit. Uh, we've introduced the scope of now it's birth to eight years in that unit. Um, I think it was birth to seven or seven and a half beforehand. So it's now birth to eight. Um, within that unit, um, assessment outcome four in the current version is now split into two separate AOs. So you've got um, assessment outcome four is now 4A and 4B um, in the existing one. It's just uh, an assessment outcome four. So it's very similar, um, very similar to what you've already been delivering. Nothing in there that should be um, of any concern or different to what you're already doing. Like I say, it's just we've increased the scope um, of naught to eight years old in that, and it's uh, less GLH. Okay, so unit two um, is keeping children safe. Now that, um, that unit um, is an optional unit, unit five in the existing qualification. It's now become a mandatory unit and that has external assessment to it. Um, so it's now, so it's now mandatory, um, not optional. This is an increase in GLH from 60 to 90. That's to reflect the responsibilities um, of keeping children safe, all of the safeguarding, et cetera. Um, we will pr produce sample assessment materials, obviously to help you support your students um, because it was an optional unit. So it's now, if you weren't delivering it as optional um, beforehand, um, you will be now as a mandatory unit. Um, but again, there's lots of support around that. Unit three, play and learning. Again, same title, but we've got an increase from 60 GLH to 90 GLH. There's an addition in there of understanding how to plan activities and experience. Um, that remains internal assessment. So that will be internal assessment by the Pearson set assignment brief. Okay, a new unit that we have is unit four research and reflective practice in an early childhood setting. The reason why we've introduced this is all of the consultations that we've had with professionals, they've all highlighted that learners moving on to HEI institutes to, um, to do degree programs really need to be able to have that critical skill to research and reflect. 
Um, now, currently, research and reflective practice is um, an optional unit in the larger sizes of the diploma and extended diploma in the um, CPLD qualification. It wasn't a requirement in the smaller size of the extended certificate. So that might be new for you. Um, now, currently, all of the specifications are on the website. So you can start looking at those. You can start looking at the learning outcomes and thinking about delivery. Esther will put the, um, the link in the chat um, exactly where they are within the, um, on the website. There's also, we've created a transition guide, which basically talks you through what I've just talked you through, what the differences are between the units. Um, so you can start sort of looking and mapping. So um, you should have the links for those to be able to have a look yourself um, at the qualification. Now, there is a work placement within this um, qualification. It's not mandatory. And what we're saying is that we strongly recommend that they have the opportunity um, to go on the work placement. Um, the work placement setting should be with children from birth to eight years old, and it will help support the student with the completion of unit four, which is the research and reflective practice unit. But students who do not have the opportunity to complete a work placement can still achieve the unit. It's something that we strongly recommend so that the learner gets a good breadth of experience but it's not if the learner cannot for whatever reason and there's lots of reasons why they can't do work placements it won't it won't stop them from being able to achieve the qualification but we do recommend it and where a learner can do it please help and support them to do the work placement OK, so how will the qualification be assessed? As I've just said, it's four units. We've got two external units. So that, that's an external exam set and marked by Pearson. It um, has 80 marks and they are available in January and June. Um, first assessment um, is June 2026. OK, the internal units, um, we have Pearson set assignment briefs approximately 15 hours, consist of three tasks. They'll be marked by you as centres and standards verified by Pearson um, in the normal manner, the usual way that you are working. Um, and you'll make the assessment decisions using the criteria provided in the specification. Okay. Again, the grading structure, I've just taken this out, out of the qualification. So if you Follow the links to the qualification that Esther will have shared with you. You can see the grading structure in there. I've just copied and pasted it, but it's currently in the specification. OK, now transferable digital and sustainability skills. And I know we've talked about this before, but what we will see coming through is part of the remit that we have had as awarding organisations for development, the redevelopment of the um, the level three AAQs and the level three technical occupational entry and all of the level two suite, you'll see that coming through from 2026, is about preparing the learners for their future. And it's about preparing them with additional skills, not just the qualification that they're doing. And I know we talked about this when I did the presentation um, before. Um, transferable skills. So what you will see embedded within all of the qualification are transferable skills. And those transferable skills are the four predominant managing yourself, solving problems, interpersonal skills and effective learning. You can see on that wheel how the solving problems, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity and innovation. And what we've tried to do and within the qualification is where possible, where and where practical, we've weaved those transferable skills in. So you will see them within the learning outcomes. We try not to make it something that you have to do separately. It's not something you have to do differently. It's embedding that into the qualification. And when you look at the specification, you will see where we've embedded and weaved in the um, transferable skills. You will see where they are and you can see how they um, how they relate to the learning outcomes, um, et cetera. 
And this is what this is. This is the example for science, but this is what you'll see within your um, within the specification um, for the early childhood development. You'll see this is how it looks, and it will show you those um, um, transferable skills and where they sit and how they um, contribute towards the grading. Um, so start having a look at the spec and start thinking about um, how those sit in with the um, qualification. Again, digital skills. The digital skills framework has been published by IFATE. Um, it's been, and we've used that as a term of reference to identify and build opportunities for development of digital skills where they naturally occur. And I think that's a really key thing to think where they naturally occur. We're not trying to make you do something that wouldn't naturally happen um, within the sector. So where, like I say, where possible and where practical, we've introduced those digital skills to start thinking how to incorporate digital um, into the delivery. Again, trying to make it that it's naturally occurring, it's not forced. And again, just an example from the science spec, you will see where we've um, been able to um, understand where digital would fit in, we've put them in um, with the specification. So start having a look at those. Um, Again, part of the requirement of the new qualifications across the board, and like I say, you will see this in level two and in level three, sustainability, the United Nations, 17 sustainable development goals have been used, again, as a frame of reference and an entry point and how to incorporate these into the sector. And again, where it's appropriate and where it's relevant, where we can look at those 17 areas and where we can say, within the childcare, within the early years, how things, you know, hunger and no poverty, those kind of things where they can sort of link in with that and start thinking about how that, um, how that fits in with the qualification. And again, you can see within the spec, say so this is the science one, but you will see it within the early childhood development where those sustainability skills have been mapped and where we've been able to um, put them into the units. So again, have a look at that. Okay, so just support that we have. Again, this shouldn't be any different from the support that you receive already. So you will have the teacher guides um, for the delivery of the new AAQ. There'll be sample assessment material available for you for delivery. Exam Wizards and Results Plus, they will be available as part of the support um, package that is already um, available for BTEC National. Again, dedicated subject advisor, which is the lovely Esther, um, available throughout the year. So you do have, um, obviously Esther does lots of updates, but you do have your links through to Esther. So please get in touch with anything that you, um, even if you start looking at the specification and you have questions, please do that through um, the portal with Esther and we can make sure that we um, are addressing those. Um, but again, moving forward, there'll be um, more support available. We will start off in the winter term this year, we'll start, the events will start coming in about um, getting started, ways to plan and teach the new BTEC drop-in sessions um, Q&A around your transition into the new qual, um, specific workshops, best practice, and then spring, summer, ready for delivery next year. Again, getting ready to internal assess um, the two units that you will have for this and the preparing learners for external assessment. So towards the end of the year, we'll start those sessions and then um, beginning of next year ready for your um, teaching we'll have um, the getting ready to teach um, events available for you um, again pay for resources there'll be student books print and digital form um, bite-sized treatment um, of topics for learners it'll all be accessible inclusive um, and again that they're part of the paid for resource but we'll do more about those of what's available when we start doing the events later on in, in the year. Again, teach packs, um, activity sheets, videos, um, 
We'll aim to publish all resources by April 2025 and um, with samples available from January 2025. Okay, there's some links in here, but um, obviously we've not shared the slides, but Esther will make sure that these are included in her, any of our updates. Um, so the transition, the transition guides, it says coming soon, they've now been um, uploaded to the website. So Esther will have put two links in for you, one for the um, specification um, for the extended certificate and one for the transition guide. Um, but the link will take you directly to the BTEC National um, webpage for the new um, AAQ qualification. So you'll have that. We're introducing digital badging um, for all of the new um, AAQ qualifications. So what that will mean is when learners have um, completed their qualification, it has been verified, et cetera, they will then be able to apply for a digital badge. So they'll be able to put that on their LinkedIn profiles or on their social media platforms, or they'll be able to use that as part of their um, uni application, um, et cetera. So that's new and they, they will be um, available um, for learners on completion of the um, qualification. Um, just A-levels, and again, we're still expecting a DfE update, but study programs, as it is really, um, the expectation that a learner will do one AAQ alongside two A-levels, um, and, and that's not, changed and we're waiting for more um, guidance from that. Um, what we do know is learners in this sector, learners who are doing the current children's play learning development also do A-levels, sociology, psychology, biology and English. And we know that from our data. Um, and obviously we do offer those um, A-level qualifications too um, for learners to take. Okay, now I think this is really important um, for you to, um, we did do a, a direct communication out to centres, I think it was the 3rd of May, and I know Esther's put it on her, it's on Esther's webpage um, of updates. So it's really important because of the reforms and the funding. So the National Diploma and the National Extended Diploma, the Early Years Educator, um, they will both be defunded from the 31st of July. So they those qualifications will be withdrawn by us on the 31st um, of August because they are no longer meet the government requirement for funding. So um, they will be withdrawn. What's really, really important is if you have any learners who are on the current extended certificate who need to be topped up to the diploma or the extended diploma, um, to continue on, they need to um, have, you need to top them up before the 31st of July. Uh, and that's in particular for learners who want to be counted in the full and relevant lists, the um, full and relevant ratios, they may want to go into practice. Um, so yeah, please make sure any learners are topped up um, the current extended certificates um, in children's play learning development will be available until the 31st of July, 2025. So you can run this until um, you've got another, another cohort of these to, this to run, but it's just on the extended certificate. There is no provision for the diploma or the extended diploma. So, I can't stress that enough. Any learners that need topping up onto those higher need to be done by the 31st of July. Otherwise, you won't be able to um, fund or deliver. OK, so um, the BTEC Nationals from 2025. So cycle one of the reforms allowed us to um, submit qualifications for funding in all of these subject areas. Um, we submitted in all of these subject areas, and I'm happy to say we were approved for all of the qualifications in these subject areas. So the two that sit naturally together is the early childhood development and the health and social care. 
all extended certificates. We weren't allowed the larger sizes because the funding reforms mean you, if there is um, a T level or an, um, an apprenticeship in those subject areas, you, we were not allowed the larger sizes, which we obviously, you know, in early childhood development, we have a T level and we have an apprenticeship um, provision, which was why we weren't allowed to develop an alternative academic qualification, because the government say there is alternative provision with the T level. Um, so that's why um, they're, these are all in the smaller sizes, because there is provision elsewhere that um, the government said overlapped and therefore they wouldn't fund. So that's where we are moving forward. We've also been allowed to develop technicals um, and they are funded from September, 2025. Interesting, we were allowed to develop an early years educator technical occupational entry diploma, but only for adults because again, there is the apprenticeship and there is the T-level. So, that, so that's just for adult provision. We were also allowed to develop a teaching assistant um, diploma, again, for adults only, because there is um, the provision within the um, T-level and there is an apprenticeship. Now, interesting, both of these qualifications, early as educator and teaching assistant, they are both fully mapped to the apprenticeship standard. Um, and they are available for funding for adults only. Both of them, if you're interested in delivery for adults, it's really to get out adults back into the workplace. Um, they both have quite a large um, work placement attached to them. But again, they are on the website if that's of interest to you to look at delivery. This is 2026 moving forward. So this is where we're currently at. Um, the, the cycle two reforms that the window to submit has been um, closed until after the, um, after the election. So that is, that they're the subject areas that we are currently working on and the submission window has been pushed back. We were planning to submit these um, end of June, beginning of July, but it's been um, extended now because of the um, because of the election. And again, the technicals I've just talked about, they're the subject areas for the technicals. Interesting, you'll see here the social care, which um, we weren't allowed to do, but then at the last minute they've told us we are allowed to do. And that will be for 16 to 19s, um, fully mapped to the apprenticeship standard. Okay, where you can find out more about the 2026 nationals. Esther will be doing lots of sharing of information, but all of the AAQs are on the current BTEC nationals page. Um, across the top of the page, there is the alphabet. And if you click on the early childhood development, you'll find all that you need to know um, for the new AAQ that you'll be delivering. Um, September, 2025 onwards, We'll have networks and um, to learn more about the qualifications. And that is it really. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions that they've put in the box. Um, I shall stop sharing my screen. Um, Esther, have you had any questions? Not much come through. Um, no. I've I've dropped in. I think everybody will be able to see. I've dropped in loads of links. I'm sorry. I've just done loads and loads of links. Okay, um, I've put the specification in. I've put the transition guide in. I've also put in my June update. Just you know, because I want lots of people to read it. Um, I've also put in funding information. Um, so I've put in as many things that I think might be useful as I possibly can. Um, and we're just trying. Hang on. We're just getting some questions in now. Yeah. So um, Shelley has said, I think it's going to have a big impact if they're only allowed to do one AAQ. My group numbers will go down because lots of students do applied science and sport as well. Absolutely, we're well yeah. aware of that, Shelley. Um, but I can't, we can't change it. The government have said one AAQ and two A-levels at the moment. Um, 
And Nassim has said, can it be delivered over two years? Yes, of course. Over two years is what either a year or two years is like you are doing yeah. now. So, yeah, absolutely. Is it equivalent to one A level? Yes. Yeah. Same as the extended certificate is at the moment. Yeah. And we hope that we've we've taken on board the feedback that we'd received from centres and we know that in general, you like the delivery of, of the extended, the current extended certificate. We know where the problem area was within the um, external assessment in unit two. So we've addressed all that without actually trying to change the content too much um, because the, the subject areas are still as important. You know, the child development, the, the, the safeguarding, the children's play, they were still the, all the important subject areas. So we've tried to keep it as near to we weren't allowed to just resubmit the same quote we've tried to keep it as near to what you currently deliver um, and um, as flexible as we can so that it's you're not having such a drastic change um, I can see a question is there still lots of paperwork to be completed like before or is it like or is it like BTEC PSA um, we hope that you know the, the set person set assignment briefs um not like the authorized assignment briefs you can't amend them so we're hoping that um we've taken away a lot of the um paperwork for you so we hope it's straightforward to deliver um obviously we'll be waiting on your feedback will the sv process stay the same yep yeah, absolutely it will be the same um yeah, the PSA, where will where will they change often? Yeah, so it makes it harder for AI students finding SO. Um, yeah, that's still un, up for being discussed, Esther, isn't it? That um yeah, there will be yeah. a few variations of the Pearson set assignment brief, but how often they'll change. We um <laughs> <laughs> Oh Jill, anytime you want to talk to me, can you just ring me and tell me <laughs> yeah is there a set window to complete that so it's really as your learner as as and when you feel your learner is ready to to do those so they are valid throughout the year there's no the exact the external assessments are set timelines but not um the person set assignment brief can they have access to a scheme of work i've no idea whether a scheme of work is in production um it may well be in the paid for resources mm, yeah i'm not sure about scheme of work yeah i, I think I'm it may be in really the, sorry um, I, I don't actually know no let me just go back to um um doesn't say schemes of work on the paid for resources um activity sheets answers videos activity sheets online quizzes but it doesn't say um schemes of work sorry we can um find that out and we can do that in, in your, one of your updates esther yeah i will yeah. look into it for you and see if i can find out um will they do the exams in the first year and coursework in second not for the first year because the exams are not in until june 2026 so if they start the course in oh no that will be the first year oh sorry i'm losing my dates <laughs> yeah so it's up to you whether you do the exams first or the internals first do it how you are most comfortable yeah no the textbooks are in progress at the moment they are being written 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 uh uh, yeah if, yeah so if you do it over two years you could do the exams in the first year and the internals in the second year but it would be really up to you what that what you do um resits are the same as they are now so they'll get two reset opportunities so the first sitting and then two resets sorry Deanne, i've taken over that's fine honestly <laughs> You know me, I just love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> no, I like the sound of your voice. <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> uh, 
um, that I promise you the textbooks will definitely be ready. Definitely. We learned a very strong lesson from the Tech Awards, so they will be ready. And if they're not, you can come and shout at me, but I promise they will be ready. And like I say, please do go and look at the, the specification is up. Um, please do go and look and, and just start going through that. You'll see subtle changes um, in the learning um, assessment criteria, but not, not huge. Um, if anything, it's going to be, if you're not already delivering the research and reflective practice unit as part of the larger qual, that might be something that you want to concentrate on um, looking at first, but everything else should more or less be the same. Uh, right, let's uh, do you still need to produce an assessment plan? Yes, you will. It's the same as it was before, but it's only an assessment plan for your four units. Uh, will you be recruiting a fresh and moderators and markers? I assume so. Um, I, I would assume so. I don't know whether there's anything up about it on the recruitment page at the moment, but um, it definitely we will be as time moves on. So getting on towards, you know, sort of middle of next year, I should think we will definitely be starting to recruit. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh. And Jill, email me. I might have something. Just, just email me. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, is it the same as the BTEC Play Learning and Book for 2016? No, it will be new and updated. It's very new. It's got lots of new things. Um, there'll be a teacher guide. There'll also be revision guides and things like that as well. Okay, and like I said, it, the, towards the end of 2024, we, we will, there will start being events um, to support you in the delivery and Obviously, before the um, before the qual goes live, twenty twenty five, um, there'll be more events. Okay, so um, we finished twenty minutes early, but unless anybody's got any questions, I know time's precious, and you'll all want to be getting home. Um, I'm happy to end the session if um, if everybody's. Finish with the question. Like I say, anything, please um, message Esther, um, and we will definitely just we'll just, just message keep me. giving as much information as we know, um, but we'll keep everybody updated as much as we can when we know what we can.